Mm. Hello. Welcome to a day that we've been waiting a very long time for. Back in January of 2017 at the Detroit Motor Show, VW unveiled the ID Buzz concept, an all electric reimagining of its iconic people carrier. And everyone loved it. A year later on this very channel, we had an exclusive drive in a one of a kind prototype of the Buzz in California, a video which by the way, is the second most popular we've ever made. Well, today, almost five years on from the initial unveiling at the Detroit Motor Show, we're here, not in California, not in Detroit, but in Milton Keynes for a first look and first drive in a very nearly finished pre-production version of the Buzz. So it's time for some answers. Does it live up to the hype? Has it survived that perilous journey from concept to production unscathed? And will surfer dudes that do this in photos Dude. want to buy it? All will be revealed, my friends, because at long last, this is the VW ID Buzz. And this is fully charged. Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney, the number one festival for clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live in Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we cannot wait to see you there. And here it is, the buzz at long last. What do we think? I'm going to give you a moment to take it in, form your opinions of the design. It is still very lightly camouflaged, but we can pretty much see what it's all about at this stage. And just while you're doing that, let me share a fun fact with you. Did you know that the original T1 VW Bully was the first people carrier? It was the first car where designers asked the question, what is the absolute most passenger space I could extract from that size wheelbase. And actually, if you compare a 1950 VW bus to a modern day giant petrol powered SUV, you could only conclude that we've taken a few steps backwards in terms of our packaging of our cars. Now, like all MEB cars, the ID Buzz is compatible with over-the-air updates, meaning that your infotainment, your safety features are going to steadily improve over time. Unlike previous MEB cars, it also has bi-directional charging. Now, I'm of the opinion that a lot of people don't fully appreciate just how exciting, just how big of a deal bi-directional charging could prove to be. And I'm gonna to explain to you in a bit more detail why it's so exciting in just a second. But first, it's time to take this pre-production car out on the road. Lovely, well, here we are out in the ID Buzz. This has been a long time coming. Fun fact, my parents used to have an original VW splitty camper van. They used to go windsurfing in Cornwall on the weekends. This was before I was born. Whenever my mother tells this story, her eyes glaze over and she remembers the past fondly and then she snaps back to reality and goes, and then you came along. Sorry. And there is something quite pleasing about the continuity of the fact that this, like the original Bully, is rear wheel drive. I mean, it was always going to be because MEB cars tend to be, but it just feels so right. Now, normally we would be inclined to wait until we're able to give you the full review. As you can see, quite a lot of stuff is covered up and I can't talk to you about the interior today. We have to wait a little bit longer for that. But when a car, as iconic as this one goes electric, we have to cover it as soon as we possibly can. We could not resist the temptation to have a quick go in this thing, even if it's not quite finished yet. Although here are a couple of pre-approved 
tidbits about this interior that I have been given permission to share with you. Up to seven USB-C ports can be applied to this interior of the Buzz, up to 12 inch screen for the infotainment, which I believe is bigger than the one you can get in the ID4 and 3, a yeah. little bit bigger. Uh, you can also have uh, power sockets so that you can, you know, power your building site, your power tools, your lights, if you go for the cargo version, nice touch. Handling, well, I don't have a huge amount of frame of reference, I don't do much vanning, but I'm loving this nice, high, commanding driving position. I'm in a big, squashy armchair type seat, great view of the road, really nice visibility actually, such a big, glassy interior. The windscreen is quite far forward, there's a lot of dash in front of me, which again, can't show you, is covered up. But where the windscreen is, is quite literally the front of the car. There is no additional bonnet, there's nothing extra. What I'm seeing is exactly how close I could get to the car in front, which is quite confidence inspiring. A few designy bits to pick up on. Nice big friendly face. They're all quite happy looking cars, the ID cars, aren't they? Nice big VW badge and you can kind of see that V shape. Those are both nods to the original T1. They've not tried to make it look retro, I don't think. They're not trying to make it look like a 70 year old bus, but it's a homage. There are certain details in there that just acknowledge the existence of the original. Super short overhangs. We knew it was going to have those. We like seeing those because we know what that means. The longer the wheelbase, the more space inside for you and your stuff. This van is actually 20 centimeters shorter than a VW Transporter, but because it's got the same length of wheelbase, it's got just as much space inside. Speaking of space, in this configuration that you see behind me, which is the five-seater, you get 1,121 liters of cargo space. If you drop those back seats out and you go for the cargo, 4,000 liters, four cubic meters, quite a lot of space. Now, I want to talk about that bi-directional charging function because I think it's easily overlooked. It's something that Bobby always gets really excited about and it's taken me a while to completely understand the significance of it. So let me try and relay that to you now. First and foremost, it means that you have the ability to plug tools and equipment into your car. That's very handy, we already know that. We also know that you can use your car as a big emergency battery pack. If there's a power outage in your area, you can use it to power your home for a few days. Incredibly useful feature. But more than that, there's money to be saved, even money to be made. Let's say you own a fleet of 100 ID Buzz taxi cabs and every night they charge cheaply when the electricity rates are low or even better via power generated from solar on the roof of your office building. Your fleet goes out all day, they're driving around, they come back at the end of the shift, any juice left in the tank you plug them in, you put it back into the grid during peak times and you sell it for increased prices. You can, you can significantly save the amount of money that you're spending on charging by selling back some of that electricity to the grid. And what this does in the grand scheme of things is help smooth out the demand on the grid. It's properly exciting stuff. And when you think about the potential that creates once most people are driving bi-directional charging vehicles, it gets even more exciting. Just pausing to um, fiddle with some cameras in the, in the camera car up ahead. And we've uh, attracted the displeasure of a local farmer. You can maybe see him through the window just behind me here. He uh, appears to be priming a shotgun at the moment. Ever happy to see you, farmers. Oh, he's gone, okay. Oh, another feature that I didn't mention before that is extremely exciting is something VW is calling plug and charge. And basically what VW has done is team up with lots of different charging companies and come to an agreement whereby if you use their charge networks, you can just arrive plug the car in, the car does some clever communication with the charger, and it just starts going. No tapping of a card, no logging into the app, no fumbling for your credit card, just like a Tesla supercharger, plug and charge. That is beautiful to see. Anyone who drives a non-Tesla electric car can tell you 
by far the most annoying thing about EV ownership at this moment in time is the wallet full of RFID cards and membership cards. It's all the different apps that you've got to log in for and give them your mother's maiden name and your firstborn child. It's, it's annoying, it's admin, and that simplification of the charging process, it just makes the whole EV experience a lot more appealing in my opinion. Other versions will be coming subsequently. We know we're going to get a longer wheelbase cargo version along with, quote, a broader possibility of options in the interior, which I'm hoping is German PR speak for camper. In fact, they've already told us over there. We are getting that. It's going to be called the Buzz California, but not until 2024, 2025. Incidentally, do you think it's interesting that they've gone five-seater instead of seven-seater for the people carrier? Essentially, what we have here is the world's roomiest estate car. Ooh, look at that turning circle. Much was made of the turning circle in the technical presentation. 11 meters. They're very happy with the 11 meters. It is good. It's, it's a maneuverable van. Speaking of that platform, quick mention for the MEB. We know it, we love it. Same platform underpinning ID3, ID4, Q4 Retron, Enyaq, uh, Cupra Born. Here it is again in the buzz. Big battery as standard. You get the 77 kilowatt battery as standard in this car. And that is married to a single rear mounted 150 kilowatt motor, which is quite a lot of power for a, for a van like this. 150 kilowatt roughly 200 horsepower. I've run the numbers. That's eight times the power that you got in the original T1 VW Bully. Eight times, and also rear wheel drive. Bit of, bit of sendage, bit of drifting in this thing? I don't know, maybe. Range, let's talk about range. We don't have an exact figure yet, but we can do some calculations, right? That 77 kilowatt hour battery in an ID4 with the same motor will get you about 290 miles real world range. It's fair to assume this thing is not going to be quite as slippery cutting through the air, so I would estimate more like 250. When the longer version comes out, that will be available with an even bigger battery. Concluding thoughts on the Buzz then? Well, it's a bit soon for concluding thoughts, isn't it? But can we first just take a moment to be happy that this thing is here, that it's finally happening? The e-bully, it's arrived. I love it when a motoring icon goes electric. It just makes me feel all warm and gooey inside. So what have we gleaned? Well, design, strong. I'm happy with it. I think they've sufficiently not butchered that concept that we really liked. It nods to the original without pandering to it. Performance, handling. Impressive, it's comfortable, maneuverable, great visibility, big range, it charges quickly. Some of those features are what really get me excited. Bi-directional charging, that's a big deal. The plug and charge thing VW are doing, wow, that is brilliant. Question marks I have, well, the interior, we need to see around that. Let's keep in mind that the interiors are the big Achilles heel of the existing ID cars. Please tell me they've done something about the rubby buttons, please. That would, that would be quite a key factor in my overall opinion on this car, to be completely honest with you. So we'll reserve judgment until we've seen the finished article. But for now, it's just great to see this thing out on the road in real life. The e-bully, ladies and gentlemen. So there we have it. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that episode with Jack, and how does he get in those cars? Because honestly, he is still growing to this day. Anyway, there's another episode with Jack there. There's a brilliant episode there, one of our latest. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged, and that is our Patreon link.